Here we left off Kuf Beit Tes. He had said in the previous paragraph, Kuf Beit Tes, the first second paragraph, first column. The Targum always represents something which is, which is the highest level. It's something which is beyond one's grasp. It's outside of the realm of, of physicality. Therefore, this Mimer should be stated by Ben Gerin. Ben Bagbag and Ben Hei. He said, the Torah, that's what gives the power to Gerim more than anything else. The Torah. What attracted Yisrael going into the desert? Matan Torah, Shoma, Ubol is Gaya. So we see there's a linkage between Torah. That was the incentive, that was the draw for Gerim. Torah is like all encompassing. There's even a place for the yeah, for the non Jew to become part of it. That's how all encompassing it is. I don't know what, what does the Midbar have to do with this. It was location which is ownerless, even though the Gemara says another reason why it's... Because the person has to make himself hefker when it comes to the Midbar Torah. Chafilu, unless it means it has no identity. Just as the desert has no character, it doesn't have an identity of anything of value, even the person who has no identity, he's a goy. Nevertheless, it's a place for him to enter through that. Hosev ne madregus umalvus hator el yono, shi alakol vi elakol. It transcends everything and it encompasses everything. That it's even an entry point for the for the goy to come. The Najis were offered the Torah. I'm saying something interesting here. Well, what relevance do they have to the Torah? The answer is they rejected it. Because the Torah, since it's all encompassing, even the per person at the lowest level is able to enter through the Torah itself. We were offered less. Because if we were offered it, that means we would have had it. Hashem knew they would reject it. He knew they would reject it. So let's say he would have given it to offered us, and we said, yes, okay, that's, that's the end of the story. No, but it's interesting. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, it's a morale in Rosh Hashem. He speaks about, says that um, Aaron married she came from the most prestigious family, including Moshe Rabbeinu, Gioris. A man of Moshe Rabbeinu's status, she married Gioris. So I mentioned, maybe I said something phenomenal. He says that each person has a certain profile, and it's a very unique profile. So therefore, A person like Aaron, as great as he was, he he wasn't all encompassing. He had his very he had his limitations. Aaron had limitations within his context of being exceptional. A person within limitations could marry a, a, a person who has an identity within limitations. That's a shavit. A shavit. Each shavit has its unique profile within its spiritual infrastructure. 
Moshe Rabbeinu had no profile. He was all-encompassing. He was everything. So if he would marry a woman who represent, was from any of the Shvatim, that puts limitation on him. So therefore, the Gioris has no profile, has no identity. So therefore, it would not encumber Moshe if he marries a Gioris. Marrying a, a Jew would encumber him. It would put limitation on him. That's the morale. Some say the Torah, so who's Moshe? Some say it could be. That's the reason why the Ger has relevance to Torah. Torah is all-encompassing. Through the Torah, that's how you become, that's the entry point. Of course, it's everything. It doesn't have that, it's not limited to anything specific. If it's specific, that's not who you are. Torah is not specific. Torah is everything. Everything that, that even has relevance to you. Because you, you're, you're, you're included in everything. Because it, no, because even the, the, the entry point. Torah means you have to accept, that's, you have to accept all the mitzvahs. You want to come in. You want to be, be the goy and learn Torah? Then it's not acceptable. But what about a goy learning Torah to convert? That he could. It's because there, the Torah is, is to, to enter. But to learn just because I, I'm interested in learning Torah, you have no relevance to it. I mean, you want to stay on this, on this level, but you want to be there. You can't be in both places. It's either there or nowhere. Right? To be continued. They don't have they live by the soul. God didn't want them to accept it. Let me, let me tell you something like this. Let's say I make you an offer. I sell you a house, and I just show you the kitchen. Because the kitchen was recently re renovated, right? The rest house is a disaster, and you buy it. What was it? You walk beyond the kitchen. So what did you sell me? So what? That's what Hashem wants. I tell keep it a wolf, something he healed all tears off. You say, what did you, what did you, what did you convince me? You misled me. God, God's not interested in misleading anybody. So what does he have to waste his time? Tell him, but keep it up. We'll go straight to the heart of the issue. Achar b'chotichia. So sorry, we can't accept it. So God's not wasting his time with Edo. No, but every one is the same one. Each one had his Achilles heel over here. So what does God have to waste his time? When it comes to that thing, say, what did you, what did you, what did you sell us a bill of goods over here? The whole thing is, is on the false pretenses. 